will sometimes sometimes are here, filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all want, dear. Now is that stake? Is that stake? Humbling your humbling your heart to God, saves from the chains and the chains being wrought. Seek the way, seek the way, down comes drop. Christians away. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night, morning or night or noon. Many will, many meet will meet their doom. Trumpets will sound, trumpets will surely sound. All the dead shall rise, righteous be, righteous be. Bondage, Egypt, bondage, 
but deliverance deliverance came to me, came to me, and I'm living, living now in Canaan, now in Canaan, for the sword of the sun hath made me free, made me free, I am
Savior, God and my friend. I'll arrive in heaven, the home of perfect love. I'm time to near to home with my Lord, to near home and heaven's reward. I am not returning to sin. One of these days, yes, one of these days. 
This one here is just temporary. Really that will last forever. Amen. Amen. blessed us together out like this. We're yeah. thankful for all of you that's put forth the effort and come out. Time to worship Him, give Him glory. Yeah, Lord. Thank Him for all the blessings that He's bestowed down upon us. He's given yes. us blessings we know about, and there's many more that we probably never will know about so, that He's allowed us to have as we move about here, just to yeah. get up and have our very being, as Paul began to say, to live, to move, to move about be able to give him praise one more time with these yeah. voices, with just our presence here today, gives him glory. Thankful for all of you that's here this morning. Getting ready to go to prayer, unspoken request, or like to have an interest in this prayer, God bless. Oh. Anybody have a spoken request this morning? <laughs>
Larkin's family lost their mother over the weekend. And uh, I just, over last week, but they're having a hard time. God bless. <coughs> Brother Richard Wall family. Yeah. Oh, yes. Lost a nephew, so remember that family. Anybody else? Never mind, but especially my lost children. Bless. My aunt Bertha, she's not doing very good at all. Well, Johnny Uncle John had a heart attack yesterday morning. I haven't heard. A mild one. Uh, they're supposed to do a heart attack on him uh, either yesterday evening or today. And uh, they said they'd let us know if what come out of it. I'm sure he wants to pray for Yes, yes. Yes. Pray for the service today. Pray for each other. Yeah. Pray for the lost. Most of all, those that's here, those that's not here, we need our prayers. Anybody else before we go to prayer? Brother Tony, before we go any farther, I wanted to say this. I sat here and looked around. I thought, what a blessing it is. Uh, I've seen all the, the singers and the speakers, and, and, and I thought, how much better the Lord has blessed us here than some other places we yeah. go. Yeah. Uh, don't have maybe just not even enough for a choir. Yeah, true. We're really blessed. We are. We're thankful. Yes. Nothing else? I'd like to ask the church to remember Mom. She's, yeah. she's doing pretty good, but she's getting more and more feeble. Oh, nice. And, uh, my dad's going to remember her. Brother Daniel, he's been pretty bad off here the last three or four days with the flu. I'd like to ask the church to remember him. Remember nice. my kids, my grandkids. Remember all of them. Nice. Several have been down with the flu, Brother Lemuel and Sister Maria, they're back with us. They've had it. Yeah. Brother Jason, Sister Quilla, they've had it. Others have been sick too. We're glad those of you ain't been able to be with us are here today. Well, they say that there's a lot of children dying from that, so yeah. let us remember the church today. Yeah. I don't know if I misunderstood it, or, but this was on the last one of these. Nationwide, there's 19 a day of dying. Mm. Every day, 19. From the flu. From the flu. Mm -hmm. Bless. Yeah. Nothing else? Remember John Fallwood? He's got lung infection. He's getting better. Remember him? <coughs> Bless. get little Bennett back here. He's got an appointment this week again. Check up where everything goes all right with him. Yeah. Love to hear these little ones here today. Nothing else? Not? Everybody able, will, let's all bow. I'm going to ask Brother Bruce if he will lead us in prayer. Everybody pray. Most tender and loving Savior, as we bow in your holy and divine presence, Father, we just want to truly thank you for all the many wonderful blessings that you've sent down from your bountiful hand, knowing and realizing, Father, that all good and perfect gifts come down from you, and we want to praise you, Father, for each one that you send our way. We even thank you, Father, for those that we don't even recognize, because it seems like a lot of times we'll get our minds on things and we don't even consider the full power that you have toward your children. And I just want to take the time to truly thank you and praise you, Heavenly Father, beyond all the things of this old world. We thank you, Father, for the plan of salvation. 
We thank you, Father, that you loved us so much that you allowed your precious Son to come down, leave his, leave his lofty throne in glory, and come down to this old sin cursed world and died a horrible death there on the old tree of the cross for a sinner like me. I thank you and praise you for that. Most of all, Father, I thank you for putting a desire in my heart to be a child of yours, that, that I would be willing to give up the things of this old world and come into your vineyard and labor for you what time that I live upon your precious footstool. We pray, Father, that you'll forgive us of our many sins and shortcomings, knowing and realizing, Heavenly Father, that we're weak and we're fallible. But Lord, we just pray that you would lead us and guide us and direct us in the path that you would have us to go. Help us, Lord, that we might lay aside the things that's contrary to your precious goodwill. And, Father, not do the things, Father, because we know and realize that we need to let our light so shine before the world that they might see that we have something in you that they would maybe desire down in their hearts and their lives before they depart this walk of life. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would bless each and every request that's been made here this morning. You know, Father, what each one of them stands in need of better than I know how to ask. But we pray, Father, that you bless the sick and the afflicted wherever they might be. We pray, Father, for those that are in the hospitals and looking for surgeries, to having surgeries and things. We pray, Father, that you would be with them. Guide the surgeon's hands, Father, in a way that would be pleasing unto you. And, Father, most of all, we pray, Lord, that you would look down upon the sinner, part of this old world. And, Father, keep tugging at their heart's door. Keep showing them, Father, the real power that you have, Father, coming their way, that, you're, that you have the power to forgive all the sins and the iniquity that they ever committed. Put that desire down in their hearts and in their lives, Father, that they might come to you before it's everlasting too late. We know, Heavenly Father, that their eyes is blinded. They cannot see, but we pray, Father, that you would open up that light that they might be able to see clearly that they need you more than they need life itself. We pray, Father, that you would bless those that have lost loved ones. You know, Father, what each one of them stands in need of. We pray, Lord, that you'd strengthen the families that's left behind and bless them as only you can bless them. We pray, Father, that you would bless this service today. We pray, Father, that you look down into all of our hearts and give each one of us something, Father, down in our hearts that we could leave here today and say it's truly good that we've been able to, to come out and worship with our precious brothers and sisters and hear your precious word that it might be strength unto us. Father, that we might be able to fight off the fiery darts of Satan when we go back out into this old sin curse world. And good Master, when it's all said and done, that we can live no longer upon your precious footstool. We just only pray, Father, that you'd hand us down in our graves in peace with you and toward all mankind as much so as it lies possible. And on the morning of the great resurrection, Father, raise us, take us home to glory to forever be with you around that great white throne. All of these favors and blessings we only beg through Christ Jesus, our risen Savior. And amen. Good prayer. <coughs> Thankful for prayer and what it means to us. Yes. Uh, anybody have a song this morning? You feel free. Mind the Lord. It's good to be here this morning. Wonderful, beautiful crowd that's here. Feel the love of God moving about this morning. We thank the Lord for that. And as we prayed there, Brother Bruce, we said that we hope and pray that this will be a worship service unto the Lord. Because that's one of the main reasons why Christian folk gather out is to give God the glory and the praise. He's been with us all week, still with us. 
directs and guides and keeps us, if we'll let him, Brother Clifford. And uh, this day set aside to be able to come and give him worship and, and glory and honor. And at the same time, I was thinking while we was praying there that and uh, all that we can do and the blessings and glory unto the Lord, he'll pour out manifold blessings beyond that, right. Brother Herb, that uh, the lost can hear words whereby that they can be saved. And each and every one of us Christian men and women here today be edified, lifted up once again, fed from the table that ever stays full. And I'm thankful that it's just that way because we surely do need that strength. Uh, not only on a Sunday morning, but all through the week. <clears throat> well, I don't have the picture. Where was I when the Lord saved me? Down at the gates of death and misery. He picked me up and he set me free. By the blood he shed on Calvary. I cannot stay away. I cannot stay away. I don't want to die in Egypt land. The old archangel came stepping down with a long white robe and a crown in his hand. Golden slippers on his feet. He walked that city with its golden street. I cannot stay away. I cannot stay away. I don't want to die in Egypt land. Now who are these children that are dressed so neat with the golden slippers on their feet? But those poor lost sinners that steps up last to hear their doom forever past. I cannot Stay away, I cannot stay away, I don't want to die in Egypt land. Come on children, let's all go home to that land where angels roam. We'll see God's glory and beauty so rare. We'll live in that city built for square. I cannot stay away. I cannot stay away. I don't want to die in Egypt land. No, I don't. Want to die in Egypt land. That part there that says I cannot stay away. Some people may not understand what that means. It might be on the outside of the church. I cannot stay away from the love of God. I cannot stay away from his mercies. I cannot stay away from all that he established here upon the earth. Cannot stay away from this church. Right here's part of it, Brother Clifford. Cannot stay away from all the good things that God has. Why? Because I don't want to die in Egypt land. What is that that he's talking about? Most of us knows what that's talking about. In the land of bondage, out in sin, yeah. what it's talking about. I don't want to die there. If we die there, we'll forever be lost. Yeah. But if we'll come out of that field of bondage and sin, Brother Sanford, to the light and liberty of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's the only way that I am the way, the truth, and the life. We can live. Have manifold blessings in this life and everlasting life to come when life is over. Brand new place that he said he went away to prepare for us where that he is, we can be also. He said, in my father's house, many mansions, if it were not so, I'd have told you. But I go away to prepare. What does that prepare mean, Brother Tony? It meant that it wasn't fixed completely at that time when he said it, but he's fixing to fix it ever been. A pre-prayer, pre-before that we're going to move into it one of these days, Brother Clifford, what he's talking about. 
And what does tire mean? Break that word down. I thought about these things. Didn't mean to do this, Brother Tony. <laughs> Pre means before. And if you break that word down, tire means to take a piece of fruit that's the unwanted part that you don't want on it and cut it off with our brother Sanford and get rid of it. That's what the Spirit of God does for us. He's preparing not only us, but He prepared a place. There was a place that was called heaven at one time. How that wasn't I completely, I, it had sin in it, Brother Tony. A lot of people don't like to hear that. I, but that He was fixing to fix it. I, we're talking about angels that was not doing what? I, that God said to do it one time. And he was not pleased with it. And listen, He told old Michael the archangel, I said, go and turn with your angel against Satan and his angels and fight them. And you throw them out of heaven. And he said, I think heaven is glorious and it's clean now. But woe unto the inhabitants of the earth for the devil has come down to you with great wrath. I've known that he has it's a short time here. I, what's he doing, Brother Tony? He's trying his best to destroy God's church. He's done God's world. And he's going to and fro on the earth seeking whom he may devour. And listen, if he's got you, I, and he'll hold on to you, I, you'll die in that land of bondage and you'll never be free. I, but let me tell you who's greater than he is. I, Jesus Christ, the one that dwells down inside of Christian and women, is greater than he is in the world. Who's in the world? The old devil. He's a prince of darkness. He's got a kingdom here and he's not divided and glory, hallelujah, but that prince I, that come from heaven country in the name of Jesus and that dwell down inside of us as that comforter the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is greater and listen if you will I let them and take up their abode inside of you and you'll have life more abundantly down here and yeah. everlasting life to come when life is over what do you want today friends what do you want today do you want to die in the land of bondage and old Egypt land or do you want to come out just like them children of God? Oh, Israel come out because they hearken unto the voice of Moses that God was speaking through him and directed them. Oh, there was a murmur and they were just complaining and a swallowed all the way and some of them died because of it. Hey, but listen, the ones that was obedient got the promises of God, brother Lord. They got to go into the promised land, didn't they? Right? Yeah. Which ones was obedient? Let's just tell it just like it is. <coughs> there was two of the original bunch that was obedient. Yeah. Said this truly is the land that flows with milk and honey. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I want to go there. How about you? That was talking about a natural promised land over yonder. Yeah. Oh, man. Israel yeah. now. Yeah. But it was all the time of talking about the real promised land, Brother Tony. Uh, that we as uh, men and women can go to. Uh, that the Lord said that He went away to prepare a place for us. Where that He is, we can be also. Yeah. That's what He's talking about. Amen. We can go there, can't we? Yeah. You know what? When I feel good in the Spirit like that, I can say, Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Yeah. Just let's get it over with and let's go on home. But as soon as I begin to feel that way, Brother Ray, I begin to think about my loved one that's on the outside. Yeah. And they ain't got that hope down inside. And that old song that some old writer sung a long time, wait a little longer, sweet Jesus. Yeah. Well, he's got a set time. Amen. And all the praying and the begging, Brother Bruce, is not going to change. That's right. Yeah, in the very hour that it's already set that he's going to come to get his children. If you're not in the kingdom down here, then you'll not be in that one up yonder. If you don't repent while it's called day, then you're going to die in your sins. You're going to die in the land of bondage. You're going to die in Egypt. Oh, I cannot stay away. I when the word was preached to me a few years ago by the Spirit and direction of God, for he sends it out. It shall not return unto him, boys, but it shall accomplish whereunto he pleases and sends yeah. it. And it did in my life. For when I heard the word, I hearkened up to it. I come out of the land of bondage into the light and liberty of the Lord Jesus Christ, into the freedom of the kingdom of the living God. I know what is going on up in the heaven's country. I when no planet earth is melting down with fervent heat and people squalling, screaming, and begging for one more opportunity. Whoa, Lord, save me. 
And he will not hearken to their voice on that day, Brother Tony. Ain't that the truth? That's true. Well, people don't like to hear that, Brother Ray, this day and time. Don't tell us about hell. Tell us about pretty things. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you at the same time about pretty things. His yeah. name is Jesus. Yeah. That is the most beautiful person that I've ever read about. Yeah. He was not probably to look upon. We're talking about his outward being. He ain't come pretty and handsome for people to follow him around for the natural. Well, then when he presented the God of heaven inside of that little natural body, he presented beauty beyond uh, anything we can imagine. And those that saw God in him, guess what? They come to him, did yeah. Thou art the Messiah. You're the promised yeah. one. We heard about you. Now we see you for our own sake. Think about it. Yeah. Friend, you can see him for your own self today, too. It's up to you. Amen. Right. Well, James, we got to see him a few years ago. Not with these old natural eyes. Yeah. With a spiritual eye thing. Yeah, we saw that he was real, and we felt him down inside of us and said, I want that. Yeah. Look at these people that's in the church. They're happy people. They've got something that's worth living for. They've got a promise. I don't have nothing when I decided to turn it all over like the others had. Then I got a hold of the real thing. And his name is Jesus. And I still hang on. And listen, this is not an easy way. If it was, the world would get a hold of it. But only those faithful and true He's going to see what it looks like in heaven and a mortal glory. Keep our eyes upon Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And when it's all said and done here in the last breath, we speak. One of these days, Brother Ronnie, I hope to get to hear him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant, because you've been faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over yeah. many. And he's talking about being ruler over people, neither, brother. No. He's talking about the things that aggravates the life out of us here. How with old Satan working in the flesh, uh, that's contrary to the word of God. I bet it'll never bother us no more over yonder. Because uh, we'll have a glorified body, ain't got no more sin, no more trouble in it. That's right. Nothing to bother us no more, and we're going to rule over it. Why? Because of faithful and few uh, held on to Jesus, Brother Dale. Amen. That's how we're going to persevere. Yeah. Yeah. That's how we're going to make it. And one day after a while, Brother Sanford, and it might be today, and it's all right with me, yeah. that we'll get to go to that wonderful place that's a peace and joy and happiness. Never no more having to go to prayer and say, remember, my sister, my brother, my mom, and my daddy, my wife, my husband, my grandchildren, never no more of that over yonder. Never no more going down to the old funeral home, Brother Jim, and looking on the face, the pale face of our loved ones and say, I'll see you one of these days. Or sometimes we have to say, whoa, I'm not never going to see you again. Oh, how sad that is. What do you mean you ain't never going to get a seat? I don't want to go where they're going. There's two places that's going to hold the whole house of mankind. Yeah. <coughs> Either you're going to get to go to heaven, Brother Sanford, yeah. or you're going to have to go to that awful place called hell. Yeah. Well, I don't want to go there, do you? No, sir. I want to go to peaceful heaven country, don't yeah. you? Where my Savior is. Amen. The Prince of the Light. I'm talking about the light giver. The one that gives life to us. And I better hush. I love each and every one of you. When you feel good, that's when that you ought to be a bragging upon the Lord. That's why I prayed about that, Brother Clifford. Now I want to give you a worship service today, Lord, for you're worthy. Yes. Amen. You're the only one worthy. I've given praise and glory and honor. Yeah. You're the one that suffered all the sufferings for me. Yeah. You're the one that allowed wicked men to strike your back. I mean, split it open to the bone. Yeah. Yeah. In his pain and his agony, he'd done it for me. Why, Brother Dell, he could see out through the lineage of time, knowing that a few of God's people, when they saw God, in whoever that might be preaching, and that's Jesus that preaches inside of us. And if we reveal God, Brother Tony, they'll come to him, won't they? 
Well, if we put this thing here out front, yeah. Brother Sanford, they'll say, I don't want that. Yeah. That's what I need. Yeah. I want that good part. I want that part that comes from heaven's country. Amen. The beautiful part. Yeah. May God bless you is my prayer. I better hush. Brother Tony, you may do that, but I'm sorry. <laughs> Sister Amanda's little baby there. She's understanding, and I mean that she was a taking it in. Don't know how much she was understanding, but she was a standing right there watching me like a hawk. I want you to think about that. Let me tell you something. I love to see little children come to church. For of such is the kingdom of God. And when they hear something that comes from on high, they'll drop what they're doing and start paying attention to it. Because they know that it's real down inside of you. How do they know that? Not with natural worldly understanding. God has placed within us the very word in which we preach it is mighty in thy mouth and in thy heart. And when they come to the age of accountability, they too can have it. Yeah. Ain't that the truth? Yeah. That's the truth. They're out where they need to be. Mm -hmm. Love you. <laughs> Bless your heart. What are we going to do now? What parts are we going to say? I don't know. We'll just <laughs> find the whole okay. Just get in there. Okay. We'll try. <laughs> One night upon the sea, a ship was tossing to and fro. <clears throat> Breakers dashed on every hand. Angry winds around did blow. All on board were filled with pride as the mighty billows tossed. Then they called upon. says to them be 
least dear. What man is this they all did say? That the winds and seas obey. He's the one who sails with me. He's the master of the sea. When he reaches out his hand, billows cease at his command. Winds and waves obey his will. When he says to them, be still. What man is this they all say that the winds and seas obey. He's the one who sails with me. He's the master of the sea. Thank you, guys. Praise the Lord. Anybody else before we call the preacher? It's good to be here up to this point. We want you to continue praying, continue worshiping, as Brother Junior's told us here this evening. Let's give him all the glory for being here, for being yeah. alive and moving about, and we'll get a blessing for being here today. Not that we'll be shouting or running all over the place and feeling the, the spirit oozing out. We can. We can feel that. But just the peace that we can feel yeah, down on yes. the inside Amen. sometimes. That it's worth more than silver, more than gold, anything that we can obtain yeah, here in this life is to have that peace. And it's good when we're able to get up on the mountain and feel it so strong. Yeah. When we're down in the valley and we don't know where to go, whether Junior mentioned a while ago about feeling so good and letting the world know it and talking to him and worshiping men. Yeah. When we're down as low as we can get, it's good too That's right. to give him glory and to thank him and give him praise while we're down there because he's the one that can be there with us and lift us up out of there while we're going along. So let's trust in him. Want Brother Ray to come, take what time he feels like. It's all his if he wants it. Brother Ray. Glad you're here with us this morning. I want uh, you to continue in prayer. I don't know how long I'll be here. When I, what I've got on my mind, I get back in my little room and and I can sit down and start reading and studying about it and sit there for a long time. When I get up here and it may, it's a different situation. So you you pray while I stand. In your presence today. And uh, if the good Lord will bless me, I'll try to uh, convey to you. A brother asked me when I come in, when he came in, what, what did I know? I said, it's so little that I don't need to give it away because then I'd be hurting. <laughs> but... Uh, I want to give God the praise. I want to give God the glory. But there's some things that's really been troubling my mind uh, lately, and maybe I'll just talk a little bit about it. Tell us about it. And uh, been reading the tenth chapter of Romans. Most of you ministers I know know what that is. And uh, there, I've heard too much, too many people. Now I'm interested in people that's going to be lost. And whenever that, they turn them in, I, 
uh, turn, uh, turn away when Christ turns them away into that awful place. And we've all, no doubt, got people, blood people, that's going to hear that. No doubt every one of us has got people that's going to hear him say, depart. Uh, but whenever that uh, I want to, whenever I get to talk about this, I want to be plain. I don't want to be uh, demanding and try to force people uh, to believe the way I do. I want to tell it to the best of my ability as I can find it written in the Bible. I read a place where Paul said to Timothy, be instant, in season, out of season, rebuke and reprove and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Preach the word. I believe said before that, preach the word, Timothy. And uh, if we preach the word, I want to leave my thank yous out of it, or my thank so's out of it. I want to uh, preach what, as much as I can possibly understand the way that Christ told us to preach it. But the I, I have heard so much of this believe and confess, now you're going to heaven. And uh, now that's in, that's in the Bible. That, that's in the 10th chapter of Romans. Sure is. And it's good. Absolutely is good. But put it where it belongs. And uh, the very first word, now they're, they're leaving this completely out of their teachings that I can understand or it's coming across to me this way. The very first word that the Lord said when he came down off of the mountain from being tempted of Satan for 40 days and nights, he was up there. Of course, we all know that. He was without food and water. But uh, man can't live that long without food and water. But you're talking to God about God here. He can do anything. And uh, the, But when he came down and heard that John was cast into prison, and he began to preach his own everlasting gospel, and the first word that he said was repent. That was the first word he said, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, I, I know that we've got to tell people that you have to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And the same, the same one that said repent first and about the last word he said to the people was he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So, so what, how are we going to fix this? And, and we're going to have to put it all together and accept every bit of it. I can't take what I want out of here and preach. I'll take what I understand and preach and that's all I can do. And if I don't understand it, I better leave it alone. Yeah, right. Because Christ has probably got somebody else that he wants to preach it that understands it better than me. Amen. So whenever that we begin to uh, preach the gospel and begin to tell people uh, what the Lord said there in, in that 10th chapter of Romans, and it shall come to pass, of course, I'm going to skip way down on this. Take your time, Brother and uh, he began to tell the people uh, that whosoever 
shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, whosoever it is. Well, that means any nation, in my understanding, or every nation under the heavens, uh, because whenever that the gospel, the first gospel sermon that we can read about was preached when the Apostle Peter began to preach there at the day of Pentecost, uh, there was people, devout Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. They were there, devout men from every nation under heaven. And God had a purpose for those people being there. Uh, that Now, I've got to take my time. I, I run out of breath. And, and these people that uh, began to hear the gospel preached, it was to the Jew. And it had to be to the Jew because that was where it was going to come from. He came to his own and his own received him not. But to many, as many as did to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Now, if they'd believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and believe that he was uh, the son of God and believe that God had sent him into the world, uh, they could be baptized, but they had to believe with their whole heart. Now, they were looking for the Messiah to come. Uh, they were the people that were keeping the law. Uh, the, uh, God had concluded every one of them under sin that he may have mercy on all of us. And they had to believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, just like we have to today. Now, we believe that Christ is coming back upon this earth today. We believe today that he's coming back upon this earth. We don't know when. I mean, we may not get out of the building, or it may be a million years for all I know. I have no idea. But he's coming, and we're looking for him, just like the Jews were. Only this time, we're not going to be surprised by him not coming uh, to be set up uh, in a big kingdom here and be born in a big mansion somewhere upon the earth. He came just as lowly as he could possibly come, as in my estimation. Uh, he was born in a stable, in a, in a manger, in a stable. That, he, that the poor people, he came to me a very poor man here upon this earth. Uh, no matter, and I'm rich with worldly goods compared to a lot of people that's on this earth, a lot of nations, but he, they have the same opportunity, the same right, the same uh, blessings from God that I have. If they'll turn to him and repent of their sins and be born again and translated into the kingdom of God. Now that brings on something else. You see, one thing just brings on another as we're trying to talk, tell this. Now, we get into a big argument a lot of times. Is God going to set up his kingdom here upon this earth? Well, I'm going to say I don't believe that he is, but you can believe what you want. If God wants to set it up, then we can't keep him from it. But I can preach just what he told me to preach. That's right. That he's coming back and we're going to meet him in the air. Right. We're going to meet the Lord in the air and forever going to be with the Lord. Right. So that's what I'm going to tell you, that the Lord is coming back to get his church, to get the people that has believed upon him and that has confessed their sins before him and not tried to hide them, because he knows every last one we've done, when we did it and all of that. You mean I have to go back and every sin that I've committed and tell God, no, I've got to confess that I've sinned before you, Lord, and before your holy angels. And I'm willing to pay the price. Except a corn of wheat... <laughs> That's just a little kernel of wheat. Yeah, yeah, not very big, not very much. 
except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it cannot bring forth any fruit. But if it brings forth, if it falls into to the ground and dies and sprouts and, and germinates, whatever, ever how God's got it fixed, that's a mystery to me, and I don't understand how that little grain of wheat can do that, and it'll germinate, and it'll sprout up, and a stem will come up, and then there'll be a little head of wheat on that end of that stem. I don't know how many kernels will be in that. They might be a handful. They might be 20 or 30. I don't know. But anyway, it's bringing forth fruit, and it has to do that before it can bring forth the fruit. Now, we have to do what God has told us to do, uh, and we have, thank you, Brother Tony, we have to be willing to pay for our sins. Now, how am I going to pay for my sins? I didn't have anything to pay with, and there was not enough money on this earth to pay for one second of, of my sins, for not one of them. And I have to pay for my sins, and you had to pay for yours. And we had to come down to a place where we were willing for God's will to be done. And then we had to uh, call upon someone that had the power to remove those sins. Not one by one, but to wipe them out. They're gone. No more. All the past sins is gone. And we had uh, to have faith in that. And when we called upon him, and he uh, wiped all those sins out. Now how can you call upon him in whom you have not heard? They had never heard the gospel preached. And the gospel has got to be preached today to the world before they can come to the Lord. And then how, how can they believe on him in whom... Uh, and how does that go... And, and how whom they have not heard, and how can they hear without a preacher? And boy, we think now, now he's got to be put himself in the middle. Uh, I'm going to tell you today that if you're doing what God wants you to do, uh, and in in the eyes of God, and in when we think that we're something here upon this earth. Uh, that we're nothing. And we think we know something. We know nothing yet as we ought to know it. And so then whenever uh, that the preacher man comes in, he is just a little instrument in the hands of God. Is the preacher doing the preaching? Let's see if he is. The apostle John looked and he said, I saw a mighty angel flying through the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that are on the earth. Amen. Now, if that angel has the gospel, uh, Brother Tony Clay, Brother Ray Williamson, and Brother Noe Williamson are ordained ministers in the, in the Bethlehem Association. We are no better or not above the little man that carries the water. Amen. Now, if he's doing what God wants him to do, one job is just as important as the other. But now here is the thing that I want to get across to the people. Uh, Let that little grain of wheat fall into the good ground and let it germinate and let it bring forth fruit. Uh, And if we do that, Uh, then God Almighty will bless that person and he will and him uh, and his son will come in and take up their abode down on the inside uh, and they uh, he will transfer or they will transform us from a world of sin into his glorious kingdom and he will a guide and lead us and feed us and give us enough a strength to grow on uh, that we can become a child that God will be 
willing uh, to accept in the day of judgment. Now, I told you when I got up here that sometimes I can think about these things in my room for a long time. But then I can't think of half of what I've, has been on my mind. Uh, but whenever that God is willing to accept a man or a woman that has come to God, how many times has every Christian in this house uh, said, Lord, I'll be, I'm willing to do your will. How many times did we say that before it come from down on the very soul of us? It took a long time, didn't it? We had to get down to where God knew what we were talking about. But one time we said it, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. And it come from the very depths of our soul. And then... Uh, then and only then uh, did we believe that Jesus Christ truly believed that he was the son of God that he came into this world and died for our sins I've been taught since I was size of these little kids here all of us probably have uh, that there was a God and that he had a son and his son was named Jesus these little children we sang uh, Jesus loves me. We teach them that song. But like somebody said one time, said, how come when we always hear it, it's the old people, that, uh, older people that wants them to sing it and gets the blessing out of it? Well, that's true. Uh, we all, um, Jesus loves me. <clears throat> this I know. <clears throat> Excuse me. For the Bible tells me so. It t- right here. It tells me all about it. That Jesus loved me. All right. Now he has given me the privilege, the right uh, to come to the church and, and confess with my mouth. Now here's where I, I believed in my heart. <laughs> oh, I, this, this has tore me up for a long time. Uh, I had uh, an 80-some-year-old man uh, trying to tell me one time that uh, me and Sister Pat was, Brother Doug's wife, it was her uncle. I'll just tell you who it was. Uh, telling us that when he was a baby right down here in the Ohio River, uh, that he was baptized. And he had the certificate to show us. I was baptized when I was a baby. That doesn't count. Uncle Ted, that doesn't make any difference. We got plain with him. And he kept wanting to use that. And I've been praying for you. Uncle Ted, it don't do you any good to pray for me. You pray for yourself and mean it. Get down on where it uh, comes from. Call upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, about a month or two or three, somewhere around there, before he got to sick and died, I had the privilege of baptizing him. But I, I could have accepted him and let him go on believing that. Uh, we could have. And then where would he have been? I, I just wonder about things like this. Who's going to be held responsible, Brother Bruce? Who's going to be held responsible? For all of these people that said, uh, Brother Tony, all you got to do is believe and be uh, confessed with your mouth. Uh, and, and then now you're all right. You're going, uh, you can be baptized if you want to. Uh, the, the more I hear that, the more it's bothering me also. You've got to take the first step before you can take the second step. And if we don't do what God has told us to do uh, in the day of judgment, we're going to hear him say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Well, now, uh, we we paint an awful pretty picture of a good Christ and a good, glorious, loving God. uh, And that he sure is. 
He is a one, the most wonderful thing upon that we can ever hear about Amen. or read about or think about is God Almighty. He's the greatest, the lovingest, most loving, kindest of person that there is or spirit or whatever that he may be, whatever we want to call him. There's none as good as him. Nowhere. Uh, so, uh, but now, let me tell you what another man writer said about him. He is a terrible God. wonder what that means. That means we better not cross him. We better uh, be willing to obey what he has told us to do. I don't want to take one thing, not one word, or change it in any way. To the best of my ability, I want to preach what is in uh, this, the lid of this book. Brother Bass Napper told us, a bunch of us young brothers, and I, I can say you young brothers need to listen to this. That's starting to uh, speak uh, in, in public. As long as you stay within the lids of this Bible, preach the word. Leave my thank yous out of it, or it could have been this way, or what if it do, had done that way. It's the way God said it, and it's the way that it's going to stand. Amen. If we will take the word of God and the word of his son, whenever uh, that uh, this old world, uh, I've heard the old brothers say, begins to reel and rock like a drunk man, I don't want to be on it. No, I read uh, uh, back in, uh, and I wonder about this, if the, everything has been fulfilled in the old Bible. I know it has to live by, but one writer said, and I don't remember where it is, but it's in the ledge of this book. He said, God's going to move the world out of its place. And whenever that the world is moved out of its place and out of its orbit, what's it going to do? I don't want to be on it to find out. I want him to be gone up with the Lord Jesus Christ. Above everything that this world has to offer, I want it to be said, Thou good and faithful servant, Welcome to the house of my father. And whenever that we hear that, boy, then I can say I've got it made. (laughs) I've sure got it made then. (laughs) But until I hear that, I'm going to be doing all that's in my power. I wish I'd have took a puff of that puffer just before I could come out here today. But one of these days, I'll have a new set, won't we? Yes. It won't matter, will it? And I'll be able to praise Him. I'll be able to glorify Him. And I'll be able, along with the rest of you, to say, Thank you, Lord for your blessings on me. Now what heaven looks like, I don't know. But I want to go there. And I also read a place in here one time about my long home. And sometimes we think we've lived a long time in a certain place. I guess where I've lived now it's been coming close to 50 years in that house. But that's just a short time. My long home, and we've all got a long home we're going to. Mine's going to be glorious. What's yours going to be? Brother Moderator.
to say goodbye. But I heard an old friend say as he was leaving, I've been waiting for so long for God's chariot to take me home. Cause the grass is greener on the other side. The grass is greener on the other side. The roses never ever die. God's river never runs dry. Children play forever on the hills of freedom. Yeah. No more wars to tear the home apart. We'll never face no tears or broken hearts. The grass is greener on the other side. The grass is greener on the other side. This earth with all of its beauty holds so little. I'm telling you I could leave today and be satisfied. Now, friend, don't you think that I'm ungrateful because I've caught a glimpse of glory and my mind is fixed on leaving and the grass is greener on the other side. The grass is greener on the other side. The roses never, ever die. God's river never runs dry. Children play forever on the hills of freedom. No more wars to tear the home apart. We'll never face no tears or broken hearts. The grass is greener on the other side. The grass is greener on the other side. The roses never, ever die. God's river never runs dry. Children play forever on the hills of freedom. No more wars to tear the home apart. We'll never face no tears or broken hearts. The grass is greener on the other side. The grass is greener on the other side. That's a place I want to go to, but everything on this earth. I want to go see what it looks like over there. Yeah. These brethren have been telling us about what it looks like and yes. how, how beautiful it's going to be and what it takes to get there. But above everything, we should try. Sister Irma used to sing the song, More Than Anything yeah. in This Life, yeah. I've Got to Make It. Yeah. That ought to be our, our most humble desire in this world yeah. is to go for <coughs> and this life is over. Yeah. Yeah. Ray told you about how it says that you must be born again. Yeah. Yeah. Then it goes on that uh, you've got to hear the gospel. And then he, he went on and he said that I really know we're saved by faith. Yeah. Going yeah. a little further, we'll, we'll read right. we're just saved by grace. Yeah. Go a little further, you'll find that baptism doth now save us. Yeah. Go on a little further and you'll find that you got to repent. Read another place that you'll find that there's some believing that has to take place. Amen. Go on a little further and then you'll read in that chapter he was talking about there that there's a confession that yeah. needs to happen in your life. Born all in the church. Yeah. I've heard Brother Norman, Brother Nolan, and some of those brothers used to say, let's just put it in a big bowl, let's mix it all up, and take every bit of it all at once. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because that's how God fixed it up. Amen. Let's take a little here. I can take just about any doctrine any belief, any, any philosophy about this book right here, and I can pull this scripture out and that scripture out, and I can, I can have you believe it just by one verse, like you right. said. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's put it all together. Amen. Right. Amen. Look at Revelation, fights and feuds and disagreements all over this world. Why? 
because they're trying to make the rest of this book right here fit the book of Revelation. Amen. When you need to do it backwards, That's you right. need to make Revelation fit the rest of the book. Amen. And yeah. then you'll get it just right where it needs to be. God has fixed a plan and it's perfect. What he just said, he says it's this way, and then he says over here it's that way, and he's, we're saved by faith. I have to amen, amen. we are. Yeah. We have to have that faith in order to be yeah. saved. If you've got it, without it, you can't please him. Right. He teaches us in there, without faith it is impossible to please amen. God. Amen. Go on a little further, you'll find that the devils believe amen. and they tremble. Amen. Right? Amen. The Bible tells us that. That means they've got faith. If they believe, they know there's a God over there. Right. They know that he's up there. And we even find one time a man was come out of his mind, possessed with devils, cut yeah. himself. Yeah. He was naked. Going, they tried to chain him up, and they couldn't do it. Praise his name forevermore. When they began to come in contact with Jesus, a change happened to that. Amen. Right. Amen. It happened to me. Amen. Those devils were in there. They knew about what their destiny was going to be. While our time is not yet, they even mentioned that yeah. in that scripture there. They know where they're going when this life is over. God has ordained it. It's not going to change. And if we understand and know that we're living here on this earth, we can believe that there's a heaven. We can believe that there's a hell. We can believe that that Christ died upon the cross of Calvary for our sins, that he shed his blood for all the people of this world, that he was buried, rose again the third day. We can believe that he was born of the Virgin Mary, and we can have that belief and die and go to hell. Amen. 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 We've got to put it in action. Faith without works is dead. We've got to put it all together, just like Brother Ray has instructed us here, and begin to step out on faith and do what that he has told us to do while that we're living here in this world because when we obtain that faith that he has spoken in this word and that we're able to uh, receive the Bible teaches us about the father of faith as we uh, see he brought so much to our mind and it's already time to quit here and that the father of faith back there that we read of in this book the uh, great even the hall of faith that the writer begins to speak of there in the book of Hebrews when he spoke of all those men and women that died in faith and then he begins to go on and say how important faith is for you and I to have here that it comes by hearing as Amen. you said that's so that apparently in order for us to be saved in order for us to be under God's plan that we have to hear that gospel somewhere so let's just put it all together the way that he has told us to there comes some point in an individual's life whether you've been raised under it like Brother Ray I have said that we've seen our children come up in this church and other churches around us and heard sermon after sermon after sermon and then come up to the point in their life that they've come to the age of accountability and that they know right from wrong that they know sin and still yet they go and do what they're not Amen. supposed to do. Every one of us came to that point in our life. Whether they're that person or whether they're at the little boy over in the middle of the jungle somewhere at some point in their life God has promised us in this word and that that gospel has already Amen. gone Amen. into Amen. all the world. I'm Amen. not waiting for that to happen. One writer even mentioned that uh, at the end cannot come until it go into all the world. Uh, and then I'll read on a little further and I'll find uh, and that it has according to the Apostle Paul reached uh, at the four corners of this world. Uh, and bless God there's no uh, liberty as we live here in this world to do sin uh, and we can do what we want to do. But if we will obey God, and then we can obtain the liberty of the Spirit of God to follow after Him, and it will lead us, and it will direct us, and it will guide us, whether we're over there away from this great nation that we're living in, where they have to hide in the hills and hollers to do like we're doing right now, whether we're over here, where it's in every holler, up every creek, on every hillside going out daily into this world. They may not do just like we do, Brother Ray. But 
blood uh, if Christ is preached uh, as the writer said I therein rejoice uh, whether it be I or they uh, so we all preach uh, and so ye believe coming right back to that uh, so he has placed an importance uh, upon the gospel message he chose uh, uh, through the foolishness of preaching uh, uh, to save them that would believe uh, and that's why he quoted the scripture there a minute ago uh, who hath believed our report uh, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed uh, and then he began to mention of what uh, Paul said there in Romans uh, bless your soul about uh, how can you hear uh, without a preacher and how can they preach uh, except they be sin uh, how beautiful are the feet of them uh, that preach the gospel of peace uh, and bring glad tidings of good things uh, he told Timothy preach the word uh, like you said not your ideas and uh, not your philosophies uh, it's alright if you can back it up by this right here uh, and then you can do that uh, but when we start thinking and supposing in our own self uh, and preaching things that's outside of the word of God uh, and then we uh, are wasting the time uh, of everybody in the building when we're doing that uh, he said preach the word uh, be instant in season uh, out of season uh, reprove, rebuke and exhort uh, with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when men and women I feel safe and rightly dividing and saying that and that in there will not do what the time will come when they will heap to themselves teachers teachers having itching ears desiring to hear what they want to hear for the old writer of old said there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but but the end thereof are the ways of death. So we first of all have to hear that gospel. Once we've heard what is the gospel, the preaching of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what Genesis begins to speak of and it goes all the way to the end of it. Uh, every verse, every chapter, every book, every bit of it points to Jesus whether it mentions Him by name uh, or whether it mentions God by name. Every verse of it is pointing to Him uh, and referring to Him uh, because this is Him. Uh, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And then we find a few more verses that the Word uh, was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth little John as he writes I began to speak there and he said as they looked upon him their hands and they handled of him and their ears they heard what he had to say and they were blessed to touch him and be with him of what of the word of life Amen. And I'm thankful today that I've been blessed to handle it one more time right here today. Not necessarily that I'm preaching it, uh, but that I've been able to sit under the sound of it because uh, people likes to take that out of the way. I love a uh, good singing. We've even named it a uh, gospel singing. But uh, as we really get down to the nitty gritty of it, where the rubber meets the road, uh, you can't sing the gospel. Uh, the gospel must be preached. Uh, it takes the preach word. Now songs are in for it for a reason. Have you ordained that? As we begin to listen upon that, there's a whole book of them there called Psalms that David began to pin down. But those are for a purpose to cause our minds. And as the old brother used to say, to gather in the wandering parts yeah. of our mind. And to begin to get us thinking upon God and the good things of God. And to get our hearts softened a little bit. And get it ready, prepared to hear the gospel. That's why we have sin in our worship services and because God ordained it that way and that we can get in touch with him we'll sing a little while and then bless God once that we've got our mind where it needs to be and then it's a good time to give in to hear somebody talking about him or even better yet to bow down while our mind is fresh upon him and beginning to meditate to begin to 
to pray out unto him and call upon the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and that we can recognize him as we call out and that we first of all before we get anywhere in that prayer have to put him as number one. Amen. Amen. And once we put him where he needs to be oh man we need to recognize him. That's how he taught those brethren to pray there. To recognize him. Hallowed be thy name. And bless his name forevermore. No greater name has ever been given brother Clifford than at the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow. Every tongue should confess. But praise God I promise you this. If you've not done it here you will do it one day. And when you do it on that day if you haven't done it here it won't do you a bit of good. Because as you recognize him as Lord of Lords and King of Kings and cry out and oh say amen to your own condemnation going throughout eternity. So first as I try to close here you got to hear the gospel. It takes that. That's the starting place. You got to hear it. You got to believe it once that you've heard it. Once that you've heard it and believe it there's some repentance has to take place in an individual's life. Uh, what's that mean? There has to be a change. Yeah. Uh, there has to be a turnaround. Uh, if you're going that direction and you uh, realize which way you're heading to a devil's hell, uh, you've got to turn around and start uh, toward Father's house. Uh, just like we read of different ones in these scriptures doing. Repentance, a change of mind, a change of heart. A turning around, not doing a, a complete 360. You do that, you're going right back the same way you started. Have a do a 180, turn around and go the opposite direction Amen. toward Father's house. Amen. Once you've heard it, once you've believed it, once that you've repented of your sins after hearing the precious gospel of your salvation, have been washed, be regenerated, have been born again. You don't hear that preached much, as Brother H said anymore. But that's the route that God ordained. It's through Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Then what? A lot of churches will stop right there. That's all you got to do. Then he goes a little further and he'll tell you and I, that there's a confession has to be made. That chapter he was referring to says that. What are you going to confess? Are you going to stand up here and tell us, oh, I've done this, this, and this all down through my life. If I had to do that, I, I wouldn't make it because I can't remember every wrong that I've ever done. No. But I know one that does. Amen. If you ask him to forgive you of everything with an honest heart, He's no. promised us that he would sure have that change of mind. Confess. What are you confessing? The best confession that I've ever heard when the invitation's given and one just steps down. I've seen them not even say a word with this lip right here, but you can see it all over their face. Yeah. And that they're sorry for the life that they've lived. And that they begin to have that broken heart and that contrite spirit. And they've wept. They've mourned. And they begin to feel what dying feels like when they die out to sin and then oh the joy when the load is lifted from us and we can begin to feel the joy and then we want to let everybody know as we come down and it can be seen and if you're a child of God you can see it all over them as they start glowing with that feeling down on the inside that we know what it feels like to have the load of sin lifted and then bless God that a lot of people stop right there. Just come down, put your name on this little book right here, and you're all right then. Because we got to go a little further with that. After you've let the church know with that confession, whether it's just coming down, shaking somebody's hand, letting them know you've been forgiven, willing to serve him the rest of your life, or that you come out and just say, I've been saved. I've heard them do it both ways. But praise his name, he's fixed it up that it has to be in there. Yeah. Then what? Then it's the church's obligation to bury you. Amen. To bury you. You died, so we got to bury you now. If you die and you're going to start rotting out there in the world, you don't just put a little bit of dirt on top of their head or still going to be there and they'll be snaking before long. But what do you do when somebody dies? You dig a hole and you bury them and you cover them up with it. Why? Because they died, and that's what you got to do. So when you die out to sin, we don't just take a little water and put it on your head. No, he tells us to be baptized. That means to dip, if you look in the Greek, to dip it down. 
not to be immersed down into the water. Why? Because you're showing forth the Lord's death, a burial and resurrection in the likeness that he was raised. I praise God, we have been resurrected in his likeness. Amen. And then what do we do? Is that it? A lot of churches say, that's it, you're fine now. Now what? He teaches the church to teach them, Amen. to continue, yep. to set your mind, your affections on things which are above. Teach yeah. them to observe all things yeah. whatsoever the Lord hath commanded. Yeah. How do we do that if they're not here to be taught? So then apparently you've got to be here to be taught, don't you? Amen. So let's go, let's do, not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Why? Because it's good for us. Amen. It's what God wants. Why? We can grow, we can be stronger to face the old devil when we come. Amen. We get strength from this. Amen. We're going to ask the choir if they will to come. We're going to get a song and the invitation is open. If there's one or more ready for church fellowship, you can come down and let us know what the good Lord has done for you. Ray, come out from here.
get you another song. Nobody's moved since they were ready. While they sing this song, if there's one or more that's not a Christian and you'd like the church to be praying for you, how many of our friends could just come down, shake us by the hand, go right back to your seat and you're saying about that. I need the prayers of the church. And we're all we're working on it. 86. The prayers of God's people will help you while you're doing that. While they sing, if there's one or more that night, you'd love to see your name. Yeah, the 86.
don't think anybody will have a frown on the place in that day. I don't think so. Those that's going up. Sad day for those that aren't ready, though. Don't forget this one that came down. Give her hand for prayers. Keep her in our prayers as we go along. Anybody else have anything on your mind before we come to a close? Brother Tony, I forgot to tell. Uh, last night, someone hit James and Donna in the rear over there by Sands. He, she wanted to get out and just drive around a little bit. She hadn't been out for 20 some days. And this guy hit them and uh, probably totaled the car. They took them to the hospital and got them checked out, but they were okay. I figured they'll be real sore today, you know. But y'all remember that when you prayed. Yeah, Charlie Smith that was supposed to mend that the Duke yesterday, his mother in law being his mother flew the couch that passed away so he did. So they put it off from next month. Anybody else? Brother Apps having a birthday tomorrow. Brother Apps got a birthday tomorrow. Sister Brenda's got one today. Sanford. Sanford has one this week. Chastity has one this week. <laughs> They're all getting old. Who else had one last week or this week? You know, as we've left out? Josh? You better about to me. Y'all had to take week. All kinds of them here. Anybody else? Bear fess up or somebody tell on you. <laughs> After dismission here, we'll sing happy birthday to everybody. A lot of January birthdays here. Any other announcements? Church up Brush Creek tonight. It's on at 6 o'clock. We're glad to have everybody. Tonight from 5 to 7 at Moore's, uh, Brother Richard, and 7, Brother Tony's supposed to have a service. Oh, they, they've changed that, Brother Noel. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the whole service is supposed to go on between 5 and 7. Okay. So I'm assuming that the actual service will start probably at 6 o'clock. Okay. Because that was a misunderstanding with Sister Helen and the funeral home. Right. Okay. The total thing is going to be from 5 to 7. 7, so right. right. I'm, I'm assuming that. Uh, we'll start the service at 6 o'clock. Service, yeah. The service. Anything else? If not, we'll ask you to bow your heads. And uh, we'll ask Brother Noah if he will pray this mission for us. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we're so thankful this evening for another beautiful day that you blessed us with. Yes, precious master. Another opportunity, Lord, that you blessed us together. To hear the songs of Zion and to hear that good word. You said that was, uh, the old writer said it was like a, a drink of water to a thirsty man. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for all that's gathered here. We ask your blessing upon them, Lord. Ask, Lord, that you would help us on, on down through the coming days and all of our efforts. We might glorify you, Lord. Wherever we go, that we may hold up that blood-stained banner to a lost and dying world. Lord, we ask that you would go with us now uh, to our places we call home. And above all, Lord, when we stand before you in that final resurrection morning, Lord, we pray that you honor us and crown us at thy right hand. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.